does two things. Rainwater does two things for us. It gives us water to use when there is no rain, but it also takes the storm water out of the stream. Now, what do I mean by the storm water out of the stream? What harm can storm water do when it leaves our property? Runoff, that's exactly right. Runoff occurs when the rain or irrigation water comes down faster than the ground could absorb it, or it also comes down, I mean, starts when the ground is saturated. And so we get runoff. And that runoff carries anything that we put on our soil, on our landscape, that is water soluble fertilizers, pesticides, anything that can dissolve and run off of that water, and soil sediment soil sediments. And so all of this going into your storm drain, and then it goes down into a creek, and from that creek it grows into the Trinity River system or its tributaries, and then it goes into our lakes, and then it goes in the Trinity River again, and then it goes all the way down and ends up in the Houston Ship Jet. And all the sediments, all the pollution, that storm water washes out with it, is just absolutely amazing. So that's two things we're looking at using the water for later when we have no rain and, and stopping that storm water uh, pollution strain. Containers that have these, um, these on them, these rings on them because they'll hold your lid on and that's really, really a convenient thing for all of us. And so the first thing we're going to do is turn this over and put a hose hole in for our hose connection. You don't want your outlet real close to the bottom. Sediments will get through that insect netting and collect at the top. So what I'm going to use is a 5 16th hose bit. You can use a 1 inch, but I like a 5 16th inch a little bit better. You need to do it very, very slowly because you want a real clean, clean hole and straight up and down as possible. Don't break it over. Get it crooked. And, and what this will do for you, well, if it doesn't get caught up, is give you a real, real nice clean home. Okay. So that's about six inches from the ground, or uh, four to six inches from the, the bottom of it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna have to. We're gonna go real, real slow, and not be distracted by talking to your neighbors here. Okay. See how nice and clean that is. Real, real nice, and it went much slower. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to get our our hose faucet. And um, Cindy, can you hand me the caulk? It's right over there on that barrel. And this is a, since it's a 15 16 fence hole, what we're going to do is put the caulk on the outside. You can put it uh, uh, on, the, on the threading here. Because this barrel doesn't have a lid that will come off real well. And so we're going to screw this in. Now when you set this down, remember this has to go in straight too. And it's very, very difficult when you use a 15th, 16th inch to get it started. And so if you go backwards a little and get it to, oh, I almost had it, <laughs> to seat down, then it'll work real well for you. Okay? Or not. Or not. No, I still haven't caught it. Okay. It takes about three hours for the caulk to set up. Um, other things that you need to know about this is do you want the um, water to go straight down or do you want the faucet on its side? Uh, this is just for convenience of you bending over and turning it on. And then if you want the faucet going sideways to make it easier to attach and unattach your hose, you need to make sure right hand, left hand, the, the, the faucet handles on the right place. You want okay. that lip as close to the barrel as possible. So here towards the end, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to use two hands to, to get this done. So flush with the barrel. Flush with the barrel. That that just makes your caulk seal it that much better. Okay. And usually it'll be very very hard. Okay. So if I was left-handed, I might want it this way. If I was wanting it this way, or right-handed. I'm not going to get it around another time. Okay. You see how t hard I got it? I got it right. It's right on the edge now. Okay. Okay. Now, this one has a removable lid. So what we could do is put that female adapter in there. The female adapter helps hold that in place. 
and you can use um, Teflon tape to do that. But what I always do is I put a tiny, tiny bit, a tiny bit of that caulk in there and then go like this. Okay? Because the neat thing about this is it's silicone. And, and if you have to repair this and pull this out a little to re-caulk it, instead of just caulking it on the inside, you can actually unscrew it a little bit, this breaks real easy. Much more than some of the other things we use. Okay, now what we're going to do is set this up on the table just to make it easier to reach in there to do this. Okay. He wants to hold it for me. What you'll have to do, I'm going to turn it this way because I'm right-handed. Someone is going to have to hold this outside. Who would like to do that? Okay, and then I'm going to screw this on to help hold it in place. to do it real tight. Hold the faucet. Oh, faucet, okay. With your hands. Oh, both hands. Okay. Okay. So that's holding it in place, and I put that in next to the barrel as close as you can on a curved surface. Loosen the other one to let air in so it's easy to pour, or sometimes they will unscrew this cap and put a little pump thing here and pump it out and loosen this for air to enter. Okay, this had um, ettergene in it, which is a 0.1% iodine, no, 1%, one, 1% one iodine dip that they use in the dairy industry. Okay, now what we can do is put a hole in it like we did this one, or what we could do is unscrew this and put insect netting out of this and have our water just in her ear. But most people put a hole in it because they don't like this small hole. They want water to be able to go in faster. Now this barrel is a little bit different than this barrel and we brought it here on purpose to show you how you could do this type of barrel. Okay. Now um, in order to, this tool is called a hole saw, but it's very expensive. This is a, a six inch or five inch hole saw. Very expensive. And so what you could do is you could use something to draw your circle here, drill a hole in here, and then use a jigsaw or a drywall saw, anything like that to cut your hole in. Okay, you want it about six inches in order to get your water in real good from your downspout. This one obviously had some magic juice so, right? Okay, we're gonna put a bead of caulk around the, the lip here, and we're being very generous with it. Because eventually what I want to do is have this down as much as possible so it's not going to fly away. And as debris accumulates on here, all you're going to have to do is this. All you're going to have to do is that. You don't want it flapping when you do that. So what I do, see how I'm doing this? I beat it out to the edge like you would, you know, when you're laying wallpaper. You see that? Got it. Okay. And then we have another paper towel for you to wipe your hands off. The insect netting, you get it at any place that sells supplies. Okay, we need to start moving the chairs. Okay. Everyone pick up your chair and, oh wait, how far would we have to move in order to get you out of the sun? What? Did you tell them how to cut the hole uh, on the lid? This one's already dry and it's already clear, so it, it, it looks like we're making a horrible mess, but we're really not, because it dries clear.